Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start talking about slope and rate of change. And before we do that, we do have to talk a little bit about coordinate pairs. Um, so a coordinate pair is just going to look like a set of brackets with two numbers in it, and they're going to be separated by a comma. And they're going to really just tell me direction. So my x direction is going to go first, so I'm either going to go left, right. That's going to be my horizontal axis. My second number is going to tell me my y direction. So it's going to tell me if I'm going to go up or if I'm going to go down. That's my vertical axis. Okay, so we can read some points from this graph and label them. So for point A, we have to go five units to the left. So we're always going to start from the origin that's in the center, that blue dot. So we're going to go five left, five up. So negative five, five. B is going to be 5, 2, because I'm going to the right and then I'm going up. Point C, I'm not going left or right, I'm staying on that axis, so it's going to be 0, but I'm going one unit down. Uh, point D is going to be 8 left and 6 down. Point E is going to be 1 to the right, 7 down. Point F, uh, 4, negative 5. Point G, 0. Oh, sorry, not zero. Negative three, zero. So I'm going three left, but zero up or down. Point H is going to be, where I find it, uh, zero. So I'm not going left or right, but I am going six units up. Point I is going to be negative four, negative four. And point J is going to be seven, seven. Okay, I can also graph the following coordinates. I can go the other way. So if I'm given a point two, negative three, we're going to go two right, three down. There's K. Uh, P is going to be 8, 1. L is going to be 0, 5. Q is going to be 3, negative 7. M is going to be negative 3, 3. Uh, R is going to be negative 5, negative 6. N is going to be negative 6, 0. So again, I'm staying on that axis. We're not going up or down. S, negative 4, 8. O, negative 4, negative 8. So 4 left, 4, 8 down. And last one is T, 6, 5. So 6 right, 5 up. And there are all of my points plotted on that grid. Um, when I'm asked to label the quadrants, um, they kind of go in a weird order and they go counterclockwise. So the first quadrant is the one where both coordinates are positive. Okay, so my top right. And from there, we're going to start counting counterclockwise. Those four quadrants are labeled just as such. Okay, uh, there are a lot of table of values here to make lines, so I'm only going to do the first one and I'm going to leave the other ones um, for you to create on your own. So I'm given an x coordinate, we're given a y coordinate, we can go ahead and plot those points. So the very first one, I'm gonna go two left from the origin, and then five up. So two to the left, one, two, three, four, five up. Uh, from the origin again, we're gonna go negative one, and then three up. Zero, one, one, negative one, and then one, two, one, two, three down. And you can see here, it's just created for me a straight line. And there's the graph of my line. Okay, so you can go ahead and create lines for the other ones. If it doesn't make a line, you've put a point in the wrong spot, so just double check your coordinates. Now, once I have a line, we can really read the rise and the run of that line. Now, what that's gonna allow us to do is calculate what's called the slope of that line. So the horizontal change between two points is called the run. So I can only go left to right. I can't run up or down because that doesn't make sense. So if the x coordinate of the first point, we're going to call that x1. And the x coordinate of the second point, we're going to call it x2. And we can write a formula for calculating the run. Basically, it's just the difference between those two points. So we're going to say it's x2 minus x1. Okay, the vertical change is then called the rise, so it's going to be how far you go either up or down. And that formula for creating, um, for calculating the rise is going to be y2 minus y1. Okay, so there's my two coordinates again. Now you can see here uh, points A and B are labeled, so either x1, y1, that denotes the first coordinate pair, and then x2, y2 is the second coordinate. 
coordinate pair. And my formula for y, as we just said, was y2 minus y1. So the difference between the y coordinates and the run is going to be the difference between the x coordinates. Okay, so this is going to allow me to find the rise and the run. So example one then says, draw a line segment connecting the two points and determine the rise and run of each line segment starting from the furthest left point. So if we plot these points first, uh, A is 1, 2. There's A. B is 4, negative 2. Okay, so there's B. And here's my line segment. I can connect them. Now I'm starting from the furthest left point. So A has to be x1 comma y1 and B is x2 comma y2. Now my rise formula is y2 minus y1. So if I plug in the numbers, we're going to get negative 2 minus 2 and that's going to tell me it's negative 4. Now really what that rise means is starting from that leftmost point of A, we're going to go down four units to get on the same level as point B. Now once I do that, I have to go a little bit over because if I use a different color here just to illustrate this, it really only takes me, I only get to here. So as you can see, that pink point doesn't line up with that blue point yet, so I've got to go a little bit over to the right. And to figure out how much over I have to go, well, you could just count. Or if we use the run formula, x2 minus x1. x2, we said, was 4, and x1 was 1. So when I subtract, I'm going to have to go over to the right 3 units. And I know I'm going right because the 3 was positive. And if we count it out, 1, 2, 3, I line up perfectly on point B, so I know I've done it right. So my rise is negative 4, it means I go down 4 units, my run is 3, we're going to go to the right, 3 units. Okay, we'll do one more, um, maybe we'll do the last one here. So we'll do letter D, I'll leave you with B and C to try on your own. So point G looks like it's negative 9, negative 3. Now that doesn't look very great, that very good, because my, gri my grid doesn't go that far, so maybe instead will do B. So point C is 1, negative 5. So 1, negative 5 is down here. And that's point C. Point D is 5, 3. Okay, and again, we can connect those because this is a line segment. Now if we go ahead and label point C as x1, y1, it's the leftmost point, and this is x2, y2, it's the rightmost point, we can go ahead and calculate the rise by going y2 minus y1. So y2 is 3, y1 is negative 5. When we subtract, we should get 8. So I know I have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units to get to the same level as point D. Now I've got to go a little bit over to the right, so I have to use my run formula of x2 minus x1 to figure out how far that is. So 5 minus 1 equals 4. So I know I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the right to get to the same point as point D. Okay, and that's how I would figure out my rise and my run. Okay, if you want, you can try C and D, just extend the grid a little bit and go up to uh, negative 10, positive 10 on each side, and you can do the same thing. My grid's just too small to be able to plot those points on there right now. Uh, down below are, again, some practice ones, which I'll scroll through so you can practice on your own. Pause the video where you need to and uh, try them out. And there is the answer key. And as you can see down below in our second video, when we come back, we're going to be talking about slope and what that means and how we can use it.